Welcome to Gene Clips. My name is Nina Mickel, and I'm a registered dietitian at Children's National Hospital. Today, we're going to learn about how our body stores and uses carbohydrates for energy. The foods we eat are made of three macronutrients, carbohydrates, protein, and fat. Macronutrients are used to build our bodies and provide energy. Of all the macronutrients, carbohydrates are the most important source of energy for the body. Carbohydrates are the favorite energy source of the brain and working muscles. Eating enough carbohydrates ensures we have the energy to be active, think, and learn. We can find carbohydrates in a variety of foods, especially grains, fruits, and sweets. When we eat foods containing carbohydrates, our bodies break them down into a type of sugar called glucose. Glucose is then transported through the bloodstream to every part of our body to be converted into energy. By maintaining a steady amount of glucose in the bloodstream, your body ensures every organ and muscle has the energy it needs to function. If your body has more glucose than it needs in the present moment, a state called hyperglycemia, it will store excess glucose in the liver and muscle as a type of carbohydrate called glycogen. Glycogen is a chain of glucose strung together like pearls on a branching string. During periods of time between meals, also known as fasting, the body will break down glycogen to release glucose for energy. This maintains the body's blood glucose level and ensures the body can have enough energy to work even between meals. How long an individual can safely fast is dependent on several factors, such as their age, weight, and how their body produces or stores glycogen. If someone has a difference in how glycogen is stored or broken down, they may not be able to release enough glucose during fasting or exercise. This can cause blood glucose levels to drop and decreases how much energy the body can produce. This is called hypoglycemia. Symptoms of hypoglycemia include shaking, sweating, irritability, and fatigue. Hypoglycemia can be dangerous for the brain, muscles, and other organs. Certain genetic diagnoses increase the risk of hypoglycemia and make fasting more dangerous. If you or your child are having recurrent symptoms, you may see a geneticist or a genetic counselor who may recommend genetic testing. Management for these diagnoses may include eating more frequently, or adding supplemental starch to your diet. A dietitian can help develop a treatment plan to maintain blood glucose levels while promoting growth and normal activity. Your genetics and metabolism team will work together to ensure you or your child can continue to play, exercise, and grow while maintaining a healthy blood glucose level. Thank you for watching Gene Clips.